Well, hello, everybody. I hope you're okay. Like you, I'm sure. I was particularly shocked and appalled by the uh, massacre last weekend in Las Vegas. I very much wanted to make a video about it, um, but I didn't really feel like I wanted to make the kind of video that you might expect me to make. I didn't want to make a video talking about my feelings on guns or gun culture, uh, mass shootings, any of that kind of thing. And on Monday night, late Monday night, um, before I went to bed, I had seen an article uh, in the New York Times, which was um, telling some of the life stories of several of the victims of the massacre. And so on Tuesday, after I got home from work, I decided to make a video, and I was going to read sort of three or four different life stories out of the article, just to pay tribute to some of the victims and to put more of a human face on what happened. Because... You know, it, w when you see a news story and it says, you know, 59 people have died, you know, you see the number and the word death and you think, oh, that's awful, that's, that's, that's terrible. But that's, the number 59 is 59 once, uh, 59 people. Every single person who died or was injured isn't the only victim there, you know. Every single person whose lives they've touched, who they matter to, they're also victims uh, indirectly. And um, anyway, I was reading through the New York Times article and I was going to pick a few people out to uh, highlight when I came across a name that I recognized. Uh, his name was Kurt Von Tillo. And I knew Kurt from the age of about 9 or 10 uh, until we graduated from high school. Um, Kurt and I used to play in opposing teams in Little League back in the early 70s. <clears throat> and I'll always fondly remember Kurt because he was the only pitcher that I ever got two hits off of in the same game. But to be fair to Kurt, most of the time he would strike me out. Uh, now, Kurt Von Tillo and I were never close friends, and I don't want this video to come across as if I'm eulogizing a friend that, that I was close to, because that's not the case here. But, in fact, I think that makes this more pertinent, because I was actually quite affected uh, when I found out Kurt died. Because, regardless of the fact that we weren't really ever close friends, I really liked Kurt. Um, Kurt was your quintessential all-American boy in the 70s. I mean, um, I make no attempt at flattery when I say that. He just basically was. Uh, Kurt was like a really nice person, yeah? He was friendly. Most people liked Kurt. Uh, girls certainly liked Kurt. He was a good-looking guy. Um, teachers liked Kurt. He got good grades in school. He participated in virtually everything. Kurt was in a school band. He played the trumpet. Kurt was on the football team. Kurt was on the baseball team. Kurt was on the basketball team. And he wasn't just on the teams. He was one of the star players in every one of those teams. Yeah? When I was younger, uh, I was actually jealous of Kurt. I don't think like that anymore. I don't compare myself to people anymore. You know, I'm quite happy with who I am now and, and everything. But when I was younger, sure, I, I wish that girls liked me as much as they liked Kurt. And I wish that I was handsome like Kurt. And I wish I was good at stuff like Kurt was, you know. And, um, but I, I hadn't really spoken to Kurt uh, since graduation until about 2006 or seven, I think, when he randomly found me on MySpace and we had a little conversation catch up just going over the past sort of 35 years or whatever. Uh, 25 years, and um, and yeah, uh, just sort of, you know, this is what I've been doing, this is what he's been doing, and, and that was it, really. That was the only time we really sort of spoke to each other as adults. But it was nice that he actually remembered me, even though we weren't particularly close at all in school. You know, I don't really recall that we ever had more than a passing conversation in school, and it would probably be about sports or something to do with PE. <laughs> anyway, um, the fact is that even though I haven't spoken to Kurt personally for 37 years, his death actually kind of shook me up a little bit. And it makes me realize that if the death of someone that you essentially barely knew uh, can shake you up, how much worse it must be for people to whom Kurt mattered a hell of a lot. He was with his uh, daughter and his wife at the festival. Both of them escaped without being shot, thank goodness. I think his, uh, uh, he had a, a niece and her mother there as well, and they were both injured. But thankfully, they're gonna live. Kurt, on the other hand, is gone. 
I can only imagine the anguish that his family must be feeling right now. And that goes for all of the other 58 victims as well. When someone takes a life uh, unexpectedly like that massacre, uh, it, I, can't even, I can't even wrap my head around how people who lose someone that they're dear to, uh, all of a sudden like that, just right out of the blue. So, if by any chance, uh, I'm probably post this video on my Facebook, and if anybody who uh, was more well acquainted with Kurt than I was sees it, I feel your pain. Um, I feel a fraction of what you probably feel. And the fact that I feel this pain makes me feel so much empathy and sympathy for what you're going through. Um, rest in peace, Kurt. Thanks for watching.